Yo, what up, Steve? This is the How to Smoke Weed podcast. We're back after, what, like a six-month delay? And, uh, guys, uh, thanks for listening. I'm Random with Dank's Wonder Emporium. I have... Steve with Dank's Wonder Emporium. <laughs> so, um, coming to you at you guys, uh, we're just kind of going to be talking about what hit the wire today. Um, this is coming out of the AGCO. If you guys have never heard of the AGCO, that is the governing body for cannabis in Ontario, Canada. Um, if you guys don't know where Ontario is because you don't know your provinces, that's where Toronto is, East Coast, just above New York. So um, kind of the biggest population base, the biggest part of the most people. So obviously when they say something or do whatever, it affects a lot of people, millions of millions of people. So Is there um, anyone in the middle of Canada? There is. <laughs> hey, dude, don't be ragging on Alberta no, and the other, the other ones. Uh, don't make me name all seven, but uh, I can name there three. Is. I can name three out of the seven. <laughs> so, um, so this is the thing. I'm just doing the timeline. Today's July 3rd. Happy uh, 4th of July to everybody who's listening to this uh, in a couple of days. But um, so – Literally, uh, it posted out today, and so on this fun little document that I'm reading here, which is their timeline, of, they are deciding to do another lottery. Everybody, for the last seven months after they tore everything apart late December last year, um, was like, nope, they realized the lottery was stupid. 25 stores for an entire province is stupid. Um and no, they're now just going to do regular business applications and let people open up and have free market for recreational stores. And guess what came out today? Absolutely not. We're doing another lottery. They made so much money the last time with the lottery. They love it. And so they're going to do another one. So it's posted here uh, July 3rd. The AGCO publishes cannabis retail store allocation lottery rules. And so that's what went out. And you got to log into your IAGCO account. And you can start getting ready for your application. So coming up here real quick, on July 15th, the AGCO will be holding an information session uh, for the First Nations communities. A.K. They're going to break down the application process because 15 days later, uh, the First Nations are going to get a, have a first-come, first-served application process like standard trying to get one of these things. Uh, but once again, that's only for eight stores in all of Ontario. Um, so they're doing that. I'm sure they're going to go over some questions for the general public, but not. there's not going to be a whole lot different that appears this time than the last time. But there's a couple bullet points, and that's what I thought would be interesting, Steve, for us to talk about, what for people actually listening, is on August 7th and 9th. So what is that? 34 days from now, uh, the Lottery Expression of, expression of Interest, the e -I e -O -I, like why does that even need an <laughs> acronym? Your EOI, yeah, it's Expression of Interest application can be submitted at 12.01 a.m. August 7th to 8 p.m. August 9th. And they've added in some things. So, uh, Steve, are you aware of any of the stuff that happened the last time with the lottery? Or, like, what, I guess, what context do you think somebody listening would want regarding the AGCO and this application that's literally, it's buying a lottery ticket in okay. all honesty. I am completely unaware of that. Either. But my first question is, are we putting our name in that hat? Absolutely, we're going to put our name in that hat. Um, we put our name in that hat the last time. Uh, we've put in a lot of work coming up on this. That's the thing is, is like, if you are sitting here today listening to this, and let's say you were even listening to this on July 4th, um, the the thing you got to realize is even to get to this point, you need to have been following the news, getting prepared, all that kind of stuff. Now, between now and the next three or four days, can you get there? Absolutely. The one big thing that then everyone's going to be scrambling is where they've added this new junction in, which, in my opinion, was a part of the last one, but they really didn't ever get to that, is letter of secured retail space. They said you had to have that the last time. It doesn't actually look like you needed to. They just picked winners out of a hat in all honesty and then realized, oh, the winners we picked actually didn't have retail spaces, didn't have releases, and can't actually open up and don't have the money. So all, the, all that is just you won – Oops, never mind. You don't really qualify, so we'll do yeah. it again. So that's, no, we're not going to do it. They yeah. decided not to do it, and now they're going to decide to do it again. Yeah, so what happened is is they had people who won. They didn't have anywhere near the capital. 
the knowledge or anything on how to actually get a store open. And Canada wanted the stores open in a super like query, like 45 days. Like it was super short time frame for anybody. If you had 10 years experience and had everything lined up and ready to go, it would still be hard to hire, train, build out, get every city official, um, you know, compliance for fire and all this, stuff, like all that stuff in some sh- super, like that was art for anybody. And then you literally had people just like, Oh, well I want a cannabis store. I'm a truck driver. So I'll just $75. There's my lottery ticket. Oh, wait, I actually have to open up a store. Like there's the, that's what happened. And so this time there's still going lottery, but they're now adding in requirements. And so the big bullet points that they put at least on this, which is page two, that's on their website that you can go look at is applications must include documents providing pre-qualification requirements have been met. So basically if you even pay them money, and you don't have these things, you won't even be a part of the lottery is what they're trying to say. And the, uh, the three big ones are this, a letter of secured retail space. So if you do not have a, a space and can prove it, you just wasting your money. Two, so you got basically right now, you got 34 days to find a location and secure it. That meets the zoning. Number two, a bank letter confirming access to $250,000. So to my knowledge on that, and once again, I'm not an attorney, you need to have a bank account with $250,000 cash in it. Now, you can do that with a line of credit. Uh, some people call it a HELOC. You know, uh, what is it? It's home equity line of credit. You could do that however you get there. But the bank, you have to have access to $250,000. So it can be debt or you just literally got to have cash in a bank account. Um, and then a bank letter confirming the ability to get $50,000 standby letter of credit. So they're literally, even if you have hey, you have $250,000 cash, you're a cool guy, you still have to have good enough credit to get a $50,000 letter of credit, or you have to literally take $50,000, to my understanding, and put it into a separate account, and then that's secured against what the bank then has as a letter of credit. So $300,000 you need. Exactly, basically. From my understanding, once again, if there's any attorneys listening or can comment and those kind of things, that would be greatly appreciated. But... This, the last time around, they said you were going to need to be able to get a $50,000 uh, letter of credit after you won. So it was like, cool, you won. Now go get it. And then that caused a whole bunch of issues with everybody. So they're they're reversing that. So that's going to happen on August 7th and 9th. What's Same your, number? Of Is, what? Of, of winners. No. So last time there was only 25. They're bumping that up to 42. Sha, a whole 42 <laughs> for the entire province of Ontario. Um, so the eight, you, go ahead. Do you have a ballpark of how many names in that hat you think there'll be? I mean, we're talking thousands of people. There was like, you can actually look it up. They made it public last time, and I'm actually going to probably pull that up. I would have loved if, you know, it's the third of July. We're doing this podcast. <laughs> if I had more time. I would have looked that up. But like, there was at least somewhere between fifty six and seventy thousand plus people that applied last time. So I'm just going to do some quick math here uh, because I just love hearing that number and like so why they choose a lottery it's the most fair way to do it no it's literally 75 dollars times seventy thousand people the government the ag so brought in 5.2 million dollars for doing nothing but having a website say click here apply and it's a lottery (laughs) yeah it's a lottery and then they gave out 25 winners and they're still gonna make money off those people like this is a way for them to make money that is in my opinion it's a tax but they look at it as as fees of people that want to do it. You know, they're not taxing the poor. Not everyone had to do it. I wonder if you won the first lottery and you have all these requirements, if they'll give you a pass through to the second one. So I, in my opinion, I think that they're going to do a lottery. I think everyone who's in the position that had a 25, they're going to value them the same way, but they still get to compete, which is in your opinion, right? That is that they should, like, if I was one of the people that got one of the first 25, I would still want to be able to compete because I feel that, well, that's not fair that I only get to have one. The issue is with the um, the going that way is that those guys now still have such a competitive advantage that, of course, they're going to find a location. Of course, they then have these funds and all that kind of stuff. So they're really giving too much leniency of creating micro monopolies or even maybe not even that small monopolies into this market that should be more competitive. I did want to say that the AGCO is normally very quick on their turnaround and that's, I want to get all the dates out to everybody. So August 10th through the 19th, the AGCO performs 
preliminary review of your expression of interest, EO, EOI, application and pre-qualification requirements, documents, and disqualifying ineligible applicants. So they're taking, this time they're going to take 19 days. Last time they literally turned the thing around in like 24 hours because they didn't have to review anything. They literally just let right. the computer system randomize it all and then spit people out who won. So now they are going to take uh, 19 days and go through and basically ax out a bunch of applications before the actual lottery. So August 20th, now I know it's not technically 420, <laughs> it's 820, um, the lottery drawing of the 42 retail store applications is going to go down, and knowing the way that they do it, they're going to be posting those people out early in the morning. So if you apply or if you join the email list of the AGCO, Man, it's going to be posted on their website, and you're going to be able to see who it is and then get ready for 42 people to start getting called by everybody. Um, And then August 21st through the 28th, you got seven days. Uh, The 42 selected EOI applicants are notified and must submit their applications for retail operator licenses, which is a long application, and a retail store authorization. So if you... Like you should literally what they're trying to do is make people actually get ready for those applications or man, you got seven hard days ahead of you to get that application done. I'm a little confused. Okay. Talk to me. So the app, the lottery, is it for the application or it's the right uh, to apply? Yes. That's how what no one ever gets. Cause one, that's the whole thing. Why it's an expression of interest for an application. So you and me or other people, you do not even get to apply for the 42 things and go through the background checks and all the all the verifications to actually get open. You have to win a spot of 42 spots to get to apply. Now, they will do it like the last time they did a hierarchy. So there's going to be winners. There's going to be 42 winners. And, there's, and it's actually broken out into regions, so it's a little bit more complicated than that. But I don't want to go into that much detail. But 42 people basically win. If one of those dudes' application doesn't actually meet, he's got too much criminal history or doesn't actually have the money or didn't actually have or whatever, whatever disqualifies them. It literally just goes to the next person on the list. And so that's one of the reasons why they post up and say, Hey, here is everybody. You are oh, everyone's. I love it. How they say it. They go, everyone's a winner. You won spot 152. <laughs> well, you're never going to get a fucking apply, but you got spot 152. You got spot 7,000. Last time I think we had people like literally ranking in like the 43,000 spot and that kind of stuff. So out of 42 applicants, if you come in 43 and someone can't <coughs> get it for whatever reason, you that come in? You get you get in. And what about if you're number 43, everyone qualifies, and then this guy goes out of business? Do you? No. No. It's only that guy, the that guy goes out of business. His business will still have the license, and he will literally be able to sell that license even if he was losing money. And he can sell that to someone else, and then that person gets to operate their store. Okay. So, guys, I thought this was something good to kind of just focus on. I don't want to go into all the other details. Obviously, we could talk about this, like, all day long, literally just about the process of what it takes to apply. Um, I know there's going to be questions regarding this bank letter and the bank letter letter of credit, which is really funny. Why do you need a bank letter? Why can't you just show them a letter of credit? But, you know, whatever. I still have one yeah, question. that needs. So 42, is that spread out by a certain amount per province? And so... Well, the province... No, it's, it's spread out in the province. And in the U.S., it, it, you use the word county. Um, I believe in Canada, they also use the word county. If I'm wrong with that, I apologize. But it is spread out in geographic regions normally referred to as counties and so it's like five up here here, seven down there so you're literally not even applying for 42 you pick your location because once again you have to have location your location is in some geographic area and there's only going to be seven allotted for that area so you're trying to win one out of seven okay for that area i got it so you already know the region you're applying for ahead of time yeah and the one thing that you know we need to get a little bit more information on and we'll do that in a follow-up podcast is the big thing on this is can you how many regions are you allowed to apply for how many times you're allowed to submit there's going to be a whole bunch more i just thought it'd be good to go over the dates for everybody today because today was july 3rd it's something very topical and um and i you know i think there's going to be a lot even with you got to have two hundred fifty thousand, and you got to have fifty thousand dollar letter of credit 
in advance. This is the big thing. This is the big change this time from the last time is that was you had to get that stuff. You didn't have to get the 250000 You had to get the 50000 letter of credit. You had to get that after you won. This thing is like, cool, thanks for mm-hmm. giving us your money, whatever the application fee is this time. Um, tough shit. The one thing that's a little, to me, is a little bit of a dick move is the fact that, like, if you'd applied before and you paid your $75, in my opinion, you should have automatically gotten in on this one as well, and then they should have done it, and you didn't have to pay again. Nope, they're definitely going to collect their money again. Well, and there's going to be a lot less applicants. I mean, it's still access to, so it could be Uncle Henry's money mm-hmm. or... Yeah, guys, it can be a loan. They're just going to require information if you win about where that money comes from. Do. Now, it does say bank letter, so it does have to be in a bank. So Uncle Henry will need to show it, and then you would have to have a loan document and reference to it and all this kind of stuff. So you're, like, you're going to be able to submit those documents, and they're going to evaluate them. But, um, yeah, that's that's the big thing is it doesn't get to be just like, I do, I got cash um, or something like that. I got a bunch of Bitcoin. <laughs> what does it take <laughs> to uh, open a McDonald's, do you know? Um, it's somewhere, I believe, I mean, for what they require from like how much cash, Yeah, yeah. the, the famous old story, which, you know, I've never been able to confirm is like the million dollars. You had to have this million. And I just don't, I think that's an urban myth in my opinion. Um, there's actually a burger joint right now. I can't remember what it's exactly called. Um, it's like Tony's or something like that, or Freddy's or, um, and they, their bragging point is the fact that you can open one up for cheaper than like a Wendy's, but their number was still kind of in that like $350,000 yeah. range. I mean, once again, that's, it's literally new construction. You're building their style building and yeah, doing I think it all out and all that Pita kind of stuff. Pit yep. was, that's a small franchise. Yeah. It was something like that. So, I mean, that's about what you would pay to open some kind of a small yeah. franchise. Dude, this, no, I'm just letting you know, the, this number of $250,000, I'm just, I mean, if people have heard any of our other, our franchise podcasts or watch any of our vlogs or anything like that. Dude, the number one question I guess on some is how much does it cost to open up? And we literally tell people just in inventory, just in inventory, you're going to be somewhere between a hundred to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So if this number is not high. It is actually a lower number of getting open. When we actually did our um, uh, information of uh, looking at financing and doing some things to try and help our potential future franchisees regarding financing our capital raise literally was two hundred fifty thousand dollars like it is this somehow magic number in the cannabis space was it gonna was that gonna be enough money for everybody no but it was it was gonna help out the vast majority we're going to be able to do a lot with that on top of if they brought additional money to the table so and i think it should be there's only a certain amount you don't want some guy creeping in with you know thirty thousand dollars and buying a couple pounds and a little hole in the wall and he's now the you know He's now servicing tens area. of thousands of people, and and that's the thing is, I I just have always, I just always disagree with lotteries because I just think it's the absolute wrong way to go about it because I think it hurts people that actually could do it and bring things to the cannabis industry. For example, people say, "Well, it's fair." Okay, is it fair that somebody who has never participated in cannabis? gets to now get a spot, but people who have been, this has been their life work of helping legalize who have been working there and having to also work in the gray and help people and do all these things. And now they're, they don't get to continue into legalization. Dude, they were, they were in medical and now they're not in recreation. How was that fair? And so I just completely, I believe the lottery system has always been a government style way of doing stuff so that they can just kind of put their hands up and not have to, and, and can do as little work as possible. Guess what? The AGCO now, no, nothing against them. They only have to review 42 applications. If they had opened it up and said, okay, we're going to do this business as usual. They would have to review 10,000 applications and do a whole bunch of work and hire a bunch of people. No, they just can do $5.2 million, make all that money. And they didn't do any work. And so I, I truly believe that the in government truly views this not as a fair. So anytime they talk about the lottery as a fair thing, I think that is totally a smoke screen um, into what it's actually doing to our industry. It is, it is very, it has a very negative, long lasting impact on our industry. But that's just my opinion. I think you made a great point in that someone could have been working their tail off to get there in the medical industry, didn't win the lottery. I'm sure you probably know people like that. Oh yeah. And then just completely, yeah, nothing, dude. The and now they're mowing the, lawns somewhere. Yeah, the entire dude. Then I could, man, 
I could not name all the people I know just from Washington because Washington was the first lottery. And you're talking about thousands and thousands of people that are now off doing other things and are not still in cannabis because they didn't get kicked out. They bait. They in all sense of word, they got kicked out. And uh, I don't see how that in any way, shape, or form. Now, if we want to talk about how do we get the best price out to the consumers, how do we make sure that the best quality stuff is grown, how we, how does not having more competition do that? Like, we literally, this is Canada and the United States. Supposedly, that is the bedrock of our economy and part of our society. So kind of kind of confusing there, but... Once again, just my just my opinion. So, anyways, guys, I want to say a big thanks for listening. We are back. We are going to be trying to do daily podcasts. Some of them are going to be shorter. Some of them are going to be longer. Um, but the big thing is, is obviously uh, on this podcast, I want to wish all of you a great 4th of July. Um, obviously recording a day early. But, uh, Steve, dude, thanks for chatting with me. Thank you. Happy 4th of July. Guys, I'm Randon Vaughn with Danks Wonder Emporium. Be sure to live higher. Peace.